Hello, it's Paul from paul-irvin.com here. Thank you so much for joining me in this video where we're going to cover the annotations section of Camtasia 9. This is one of the updated features of the software. So at the moment we have, if you've seen my previous videos, we're just scrubbing around with one of my previously recorded videos. I want to add some annotations to it. So if we go into the annotations tab, and you'll see all these new options appear on the screen. Now trust me, they are very intuitive considering the previous features that were available in Camtasia 8 and before. It's just a case of getting used to the new layout. So across the top we have the options for selecting callouts, arrows and lines, shapes, special, which is including blur, pixelate and similar options. We also have this one here, Sketch Motion Callouts. Now this is pretty cool. We can actually draw on the screen over a period of time so you can animate in certain elements onto the screen. And we also have the keyboard callouts as well. So let's just start with the callouts to start with. The next section you want to have a look at is the style. So as you can see, there's different ones available here, we can have a look at them all or we can go through abstract, basic, bold and we have the new urban option as well and if you like the ones in Camtasia 8 well they've been included as well but they, they don't look as impressive compared to the new uh, callout options from version 9. So let's just pick an abstract one here and let's go for this blue arrow. Just drag it onto the canvas and double click on the text. What we can basically do is type whatever we want into the box <clears throat> and in the properties area this is where we can change the font. I do have a lot of fonts installed, so that may take a second or two. There we go. We can change the arrow length, change the size of the text on the fly, change the alignment, the style, color if you want to. All that stuff is done inside the properties panel. And we can do as much as we want with these callouts. Obviously, we want to use it to enhance the video for the viewer. Once you're finished you can click properties and get rid of the panel again. Now if we right click on the annotation, and this applies to any of them, we can choose to copy the properties. You can copy the effects as well, which we haven't applied as yet. Now we can add a visual effect, these are cool. So we can add a border, if you want. Not really great for an arrow, as you can see it's just created a, a white line. <laughs> but if you put an image, you can add a border to it. We can colorize it, we can change the color. Uh, you just scroll down see the colorization bot button here. You can change the color, as you can see. And you just click on the cross to get rid of the options that you add as well. And right click and let's see what else is here. Yep. So there we have an arrow pointing at me saying it's Paul, kind of stating the obvious. Um, <laughs> but that's the, the annotation options. So the arrows. Let's choose this arrow here. Now once it's on the screen again, we can change the scale, because it's quite small just now, there we go, and do all the, the other stuff as well. Change the colour, yellow, green, or whatever you want to do really, change the thickness of it, so we can go from an arrow that would be fired by a bow all the way up to this big chunky arrow thing here. All that can be changed as well as the opacity of the 
the annotation. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Next we have the shapes. So again we have triangles and hexagons and goodness knows what else in here. Now these are the special annotations. These are the things where we can manipulate what's being displayed on the screen. So we have the blur option. So if you want something to be blurred out, such as maybe a, a registration plate or a software key or anything that you want to really, you can add that to the screen. So say you have a, a slogan on your t-shirt you're not keen on anyone seeing, you can blur it out as you can see here. The spotlight, this basically allows you to take the emphasis on everything off the screen except for what you want to highlight. Again, could be <laughs> could be the logo on your t-shirt, it could be some text on a, a web page that you're trying to share, whatever it happens to be. We have the highlighter pen, the highlighter pen, excuse me, the highlight. This is normally better for web pages. In fact, let's just give me one second. I'm going to go and capture something on the internet so I can demonstrate this. Okay, so we'll bring this in here. It is just an image, it's not a video. However, there you go. So the highlight bar makes more sense. So if you want to highlight some text or something with a, a whiter background, then that works very nicely indeed. We have the interactive hotspot. Now this works if you're self-hosting the video because what you can do is you can highlight any part of the part of the video that you're creating and you can actually have this as a link. So if someone clicks on this part of the screen inside your video, you can actually get it to do something. So as you can see the interactive hotspot, we can set it to open a URL. So let's say, for example, you're promoting something and you want to send people to the sales page, then you can create the hotspot and link that. And what happens is when you produce the video, there'll be the HTML file that allows you to in implement the hotspot into your production. This will not work for self-hosted videos such as Wistia, S3, all that kind of stuff. The video has to be hosted on your website. You can set the time for when the hotspot appears as well and basically tweak it to your heart's content. And finally we have the pixelate option. Similar to the blur option. So we drag pixelate on here and it's, a, it's a, a slightly different effect, shall we say, than the blur option. It actually shows that whatever it is has been pixelated. And you can change the intensity using this slider here. So if it looks ridiculous, there we go. So you can just adjust this and pixelate as you want. Okay, so that's us covered the blur and highlight, the special options, the sketch motion options, do exactly as it says on the tin. These are predefined animations for your video production. So the box, for example, does a nice animated box. Let's try the, the arrow one. So these are all predefined, you don't have to do anything to get them to work. Um, again, there are properties you can change, the thickness, the length of time it takes to draw. So by default it takes a second, if you want it to take two seconds instead, then you can absolutely do that as well. So there we go. Finally, we have the key keystroke callouts.
these are very cool actually, especially for uh, training videos, technical training videos, if you are trying to explain uh, a keyboard shortcut in order to do something. So for example, in one of my training videos, I may say that you need to control and C to copy something, then you drag the annotation onto the screen and then click on keys and then hold the keys down on your system and it will show you the buttons appearing on your video. Very, very cool. You can change the style as well. Traditional, I tend to like traditional because it looks like keys, however, you can just have the text or you can have the outline or whatever you want to do, basically. So plenty of annotations there to emphasize the level of uh, professionalism created within your video make things easier for your viewers, uh, you can blur out content you don't want them to see, uh, create callouts, all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, so next video we're going to look at transitions. This is Paul from paul-irvin.com here. Don't forget to subscribe uh, if you like what you've seen. That would be fantastic to have you join me. And again, thank you for watching.